We start the day with the successful launch of a European Space Agency probe bound for Jupiter. The Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE for short, blasted off from French Guiana. It'll be the agency's longest range mission. This was the second launch attempt. Bad weather delayed takeoff the previous day. The spacecraft is now on an eight-year journey to the giant gas planet. Scientists hope to find out if Jupiter's moons can sustain life in the vast oceans hidden beneath their ice-covered shells. The Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, or JUICE, will be on its mission for around seven and a half years. Its destination is Jupiter, our solar system's largest planet. To get there, JUICE will need a lot of momentum, and that will mean several close flybys of both Venus and Earth. Researchers from the German Aerospace Center in Berlin will focus on Jupiter's three mysterious icy moons, which were discovered back in 1610 by Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei. This flu. The biggest question of all is if they can support life, because they all have on the ice ocean. In their interior, it's actually warm enough for one or the other reasons that they can have a water ocean. Which is the most important prerequisite for the emergence of life. Europa, the smallest of the three moons, is believed to be the most likely candidate for extraterrestrial life. Beneath its icy crust lies an ocean, which could contain twice as much water as all of Earth's oceans put together. How thick is Europa's ice crust? How deep is its ocean? And what is it made of? That's what JUICE is setting out to discover. And it will explore Jupiter's other moons too, which may also boast several layers of water. To do this, the probe will repeatedly fly past them, making observations with the help of its 10 state-of-the-art scientific instruments. After three years, JUICE will enter the orbit of Jupiter's largest moon, Ganymede. It will be the first time a space probe has ever orbited the moon of another planet. An instrument co-developed in Berlin will use laser pulses to take measurements of Ganymede's surface. This will reveal whether Ganymede has an ocean of liquid water and locate any areas of interest. With JUICE, we will explore conditions to see if life could have evolved, and also to find out where to look. Where on Jupiter's moons will we most likely find evidence of life? That will also be a task for subsequent missions. JUICE will spend four years exploring Jupiter and its moons, uncovering as many of their secrets as possible. Mark McCorcoran is from the European Space Agency. Thank you very much for joining us here on the day. How relieved are you, first of all, that the mission is actually underway? Well, you know, we're kind of actually halfway through this mission in some senses. It's taken about 16 years to get from the first ideas to build this mission and then to select it against again, stiff competition from other missions, then physically build it and put it on the launch pad. And as your piece said, we have another eight years to get to Jupiter and maybe eight years worth of science to do there. So this is a huge moment, but it's just sort of midway in the whole project. Of course, when you're standing watching the rocket just about to launch and everything has to go right for those uh, half an hour to get everything deployed, it's very exciting. And it was a fantastic day today. So, so much effort, time, money spent on this mission so far. What's so important about it? Well, as your piece described, we have a very strange sort of um, environment out there by Jupiter. It's, a, it's the largest planet in our solar system. It's a gas giant, so it doesn't have a, a surface of any kind itself. And we're going to be studying Jupiter in, in great detail as well, understanding its weather patterns and understanding its, its interior down to the depths of the, uh, where the clouds turn into liquid at some point. But we're really focusing on the moons and those four large moons that Galileo discovered in the 1600s, they're just the largest of actually about 100 moons. So there's almost a mini solar system surrounding Jupiter. It has faint rings, a little bit like Saturn's, but much fainter. So we're really going to be analyzing the whole system there and looking at these incredible icy moons, which indeed, as your piece stated, have uh, liquid oceans beneath their icy crust on at least three of them. 
So do you reckon you'll find more than just water? Well, that's in fact one of the really big uh, questions. We have a, a, some idea about the structure. So we know there's an icy crust on Callisto, Ganymede and Europa. Io is the innermost moon. It's quite different. It actually has volcanoes and has a magma core. It's so close into Jupiter that Jupiter's squashing and stretching it and actually making it molten on the inside. And that's the same reason that we have liquid water under the crusts of the other moons. There's enough heat coming from that squashing and stretching. So we think the crusts are 10 to maybe 100 kilometers thick, and then the oceans might be 10 up to 200 kilometers thick, or even more, maybe even 800 kilometers deep. I mean, that's sort of crazy from relative to the Earth. These are very different kinds of worlds. Uh, the real question then becomes what's at the bottom of that? Um, is there rock at the bottom, as there might be at Europa? Or we think at Ganymede, actually, it ends in a layer of ice again, high pressure ice. And so understanding those structures and how those layers interact is something that JUICE is perfectly designed to understand. So ice, water, and then ice. What, what are you going to get out of that as far as sustaining human <laughs> life goes? Well, well, not human life, of course, at all. And, and one of the reasons that, you know, Jupiter isn't a place you'd want to spend your holidays, um, and this is a big impact on our mission as well, is that Jupiter has a very powerful magnetic field, much more so than the Earth. And that channels particles from the sun, which are emitted by the sun, but they get focused by the magnetic field. So it's a very dangerous environment in terms of radiation. And that's actually the reason we're going to Ganymede. Ganymede's a little bit further out than Europa. Um, and Europa, we're going to fly past it twice during the mission. We're going to go past Callisto, which is even further out, about 21 times, lots of flybys at Ganymede, and then go into orbit around Ganymede. So it's not about the human life potential at all, but whether there could be um, habitats which might be suitable for life forming independently, completely independently of the life here on Earth. But it sounds like you have a bit of competition. NASA is also planning to launch a, a mission to the same place next year, which is planned to arrive there first. And it sounds like they're looking for the same thing you are. Well, not really. So the origin of this mission, uh, the JUICE mission, actually, if we go all the way back into the mid-2000s, it was a joint mission with NASA called Laplace. And that mission was specifically designed that the US would go to Europa and focus there, and we would go to Ganymede, and those two missions would work together. Now, there were some politics and some, you know, comings and goings in between, but that's actually what we're doing now. So Europa Clipper, the NASA mission, will be launching next year and gets there a bit earlier, but is going to Europa. Um, they have radiation hard technology that we don't have available so readily here, so they're going to focus on the high radiation environment, but they're not going to Ganymede. So we're going to do that, we're going to do Callisto, we're going to do the Jupiter itself. So by working together and the science team are constantly talking to each other, uh, we don't see it as competition at all. In fact, we're going to get much more science out by working together. And are we really going to have to wait eight years or even more to get those first results? <laughs> Well, I can tell you something. We do actually have the first pictures from the spacecraft on the ground this evening. Now, they were taken during the departure from Earth, and those are just small webcams, if you like, designed to show us that things have opened up on the on the uh, satellite uh, on its way into its long eight-year journey. We'll publish those tomorrow. We've got a little bit of work to do on those tonight. But the first science results, of course, will come at Jupiter. We're going to fly past the Earth three times, past Venus. We'll take calibration data. We'll take images. But the real stuff comes when we get to Jupiter. There's a thing that's important here. It's, it, it's, it's a long journey to get there, but it's partly not only because we need to get enough speed to get there, but we need to arrive in just the right way that we don't actually go straight past it, that we can slow down again and go into orbit. And that takes a complicated trajectory, hence this eight year journey. You definitely do not want to miss it. We will be following every step of the journey. Mark McCorkran from the European Space Agency. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.